Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK and I generally just talk about anything actually, anything I think might be of interest. Now today's topic will be of interest to those who are from Jamaica or maybe any other um, nationality who may have overstayed in America and as a subsequent, you know, it kind of gives us an idea about what's happening in America because I believe it has an effect on what happens in the UK. So that's why I cover it, because the two are very closely linked. Now I'm going to put a cat above, uh, amongst the pigeons in this one because um, reading the um, Jamaican Gleaner, um, it says a total of 10,000 626 Jamaicans overstayed their United States non-immigration tourist business B1, B2 visas between October 2017 and September the 30th, 2018. And that is reported by the US Department of Homeland Security. This is a jump of 1,073 when compared to the corresponding period in the previous year according to the agency's fiscal year 2018 entry exit overstay report. Now, what I'm wondering now is why they've picked out Jamaica to report on. I know it's in the Jamaican Weekly Gleaner, but, you know, they've taken it out of context. They really have, and they make it look like Jamaicans are the worst overstayers in the world, when that is not the case. Now, I went to that report and I found some information about overstayers. And it might be a bit boring for those of you who are not interested, but for those of you who are interested in where Jamaica ranks with regard to overstaying, you might continue, might want to continue to listen. Okay, I've taken out table six out of the, what is it called again? The... Department of Homeland Security report. Okay, so I've taken it directly from them. Um, table 6 says the worst overstay numbers. And these are primary guest workers. And this is between 2016 and 2017. 2018 isn't here, so maybe we can adjust the figures slightly. But what they've said for the 2018 figures is that Jamaica is 3.4%. Um, that's the rate of overstayers. Okay, so we've got India. They are 2.15%. These are the primary guest workers. They've come on one of those visas. Philippines is 28.26%. Jamaica is 11.73%. United Kingdom is 1.11%. And China is 2.25%. So that's the primarily guest workers, okay, because there's all different categories. Okay, now when we're thinking about the highest rank overstays generally, we have Brazil at 1.9%. We have Venezuela at 5.7%. We have Colombia at 2.6%, Nigeria 10.6%, China at 0.8%, India at 1.3%, Dominican Republic at 2.9%, Haiti at 6.8% and Jamaica at 3.2% and Ecuador comes under that at 2.2%. Okay. So Jamaica is, you know, I don't know if it's compared to the size of the country. I'm not quite sure. Now, this is the worst overstay numbers rates for student and exchange visitors. Jamaica isn't featured anywhere on this. We've got China, Saudi Arabia, India, Korea, South Brazil. Um, we've got Eritrea. 69.8%, Chad at 57%, Burkina Faso at 40%, Somalia at 40%, Cameroon at 37.4%, Congo at 36.6%, and that's Kinshasa and Brazzaville 
roughly about the same. Libya at 35%, Guinea at 30%, Benin at 30% and Sierra Leone at 30%. Jamaica is not, well, I guess they're not going to come over as students. So that's probably why they're not featured in there. Okay, then we have table two, countries with the highest overstay numbers. Where does Jamaica feature in this? Jamaica features, where did Jamaica feature? I numbered this. Fifth. I don't know, because when you think about the size, that's, that's not very good, you know. When you think about the size of Jamaica compared to something like Canada. Okay, so Canada, who ranks the highest? India ranks the highest with, um, well, these aren't percentages, these are people. Are they percentages? Hmm. I don't know how they've worked this out. I don't know if they're numbers, so I'm not going to do that. But Jamaica is way down, well, Jamaica is fifth. On that I'm going to show you what I'm looking at can you see that I've even I've even put the um, the rankings on there on how I worked it out but I'm not quite sure if I worked it out right now because I think under all others I was thinking that was the um, percentage but it's not because it doesn't have rate at the top so that information won't worry about that one anyway so we've got the worst overstay numbers for those with visa waiver programs. What's interesting is that UK is 0.5%. Um, Their number is 25,694 people who've overstayed. France, 16,456 have overstayed. Spain, 13,780 have overstayed. Germany, 11,040 have overstayed. And Italy, 10,337 have overstayed. So 25,000, I mean, that the UK is featuring quite high here. Um, but yeah, so what they're saying now, what Trump is saying is that these people who've got the um, visa waiver programs, they're not going to be able to have that visa waiver programs if people are going to exploit it because they're allowed 90 days. They haven't really got any reason to overstay, but they are overstaying. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, we've got Portugal. That's you're not really interested in that. Anyway. Those are the figures. And all I wanted to do, the reason why I highlighted that is to put it in perspective. You know, when you're thinking about oh, all these overstayers in Jamaica, you know, in the grand scheme of things, they're no different from any of these other countries I've mentioned. I don't even think if you was to do it proportionately based on the size of the country, I think we wouldn't be any worse or any, um, any better than any of them. So I don't I don't quite understand why Jamaica is being factored in with all of those people. Um, Trump is talking about he's going to stop anyone who's gone over 10 percent. He's going to, you know, either limit their entry into the country, restrict them in in some way. But then he's also added um, something about even those with smaller numbers. And, you know, they definitely want to throw Jamaica in there. They're just dying to throw Jamaica in there. I bet they were wishing that Jamaica was 10 percent over. I hate to say that, but it really pleased me off when they take a, um, somewhere like Jamaica and when you compare it with all the other countries, it, it's not it's not faring badly at all, but they make it look like it's so bad. And I don't like it when it's misrepresented. Um, I just wanted to see if there was anything else out here. I'm not even going to read all this negative stuff, what they say about here, but I wanted to hear something about Trump, what Trump's saying that I thought was important. It says about 20% of 302,000 B visa overstays in 2017 were from, for, were from just two countries. 33,759 were from Brazil, 
and 30,424 were from Venezuela. They were the highest um, overstayers by percentage, 20%. And what they're saying is anything over 10, they're not going to allow them to enter the country. Um, about 40% of student exchange visa overstays in 2017 were from just four countries, which was China, Saudi Arabia, India and South Korea. That's a 40%. Watch, Jamaica doesn't feature in there. 11 countries have student exchange visa overstay rates of greater than 30%. France and United Kingdom were the countries with the largest number of visa waiver program overstays in 2017. France and the United Kingdom, you know. And these are the ones that are blabbing about, you know, all these people are overstaying in their country, and yet they're overstaying in someone else's country. Where's the hypocrisy in that, I ask you? Um, we've got... What else we've got? The highest number of other categories of visa overstays in 2017 consisted primarily of guest worker visas. Came from India, 9,568, and the Philippines, 7,075. Together, they accounted for 36% of the category total. The number of Indian overstays in the guest worker category grew by 19% from 2016 to 2017. They reckon that the DHS overstay report is an important reminder that visa overstays are occurring on a similar scale to illegal border crossings and represent the same similar threat to the integrity of the immigration system. I mean, you can you can understand, you know, you know, illegal immigration. You can understand what a pain it is trying to track people. You can't track them. You don't know who's who. You don't know where they are. I think. You know, well, I can't really say categorically, but I'm sure the majority of them are not a threat to national security. But I do understand the implications of having people in the country and you don't know where they are or who they are or what they're doing. Um, the DHS, that's the Department of Homeland Security, identifies a visa overstayer as a non-immigrant who was lawfully admitted into the United States for an authorised period, but who remained in the United States beyond his or her authorised period of admission. Uh, I'm just looking, you know, I don't see how... Jamaica flags a problem over and above all these other countries that have 10%, 20% and even 40% when Jamaica's just got 3.4%. That's why you have to be careful about what kind of information you internalise because you can very well go away thinking that Jamaica is the worst offender because it's been taken out of isolation. It's not being taken in context with the other countries. Um, it says, it is important to point out that the methodology used by DHS counts entry and exit infants, not individual travellers. It does not represent the actual percentage of people receiving visas who overstayed. This is because there are a significant number of individual travellers who enter and exit the country multiple times a year and are largely compliant. So, I mean, these, these figures aren't even accurate. I don't even know why they bother. What is the point? of giving out all this information, and it's not even accurate. They don't even have accurate figures. I don't see the point. It just causes a lot of unnecessary um, speculation. Um, what else is this? Yeah, this is the part I was mentioning before. Even if rates are low for a country or category, high numbers of overstayers will have an impact on the size of illegal population. That's what I thought that was very convenient to, so they can they can put Jamaicans in there. I don't know why people see Jamaicans as a threat. don't know why that is. Um, what else is there? I don't think there's much more.
Oh, um, apparently there are going to be some enforcement actions to impose consequences on those who overstay. I thought they were doing that anyway. Um, people are living lives of hell because they overstay. Oh, this is important. The State Department must begin holding consular officers, their supervisors and post leadership accountable for overstay problems and for failure to improve. This is like what... Um, Maggie, not Maggie Thatcher, um, Theresa May is doing and Savage Javid by, you know, using um, the community to police to do the immigration job for them. So they've got the bank, they've got the banks, they've got the um, driving license, DV, DVLA, they've got the NHS, they've got everybody, letting agents, landlords, they've got them all kind of working together to pinpoint these people. So what this is doing now is putting the onus now on the consular officers and their supervisors and post leadership. So you know that if these people are going to get in problems and they're going to be sanctioned because they've made a mistake or they, you know, they overstate problems, they're going to be more harsh and irrational in their judgment. It shouldn't be up to these people. You've got systems in place at the airports. You've got systems all over the place. You shouldn't have to now delegate that information and make people who work for them have to be threatened for their job or whatever just because a couple of overstayers got through. It's not their fault. What's the point of having all these biometrics and stuff if they're not working? So ridiculous. Anyway, I took this from Analyzing New Visa Overstay Report. Um, that's where I've extracted most of this stuff from. Um, this says these enforcement efforts are complicated by the fact that the law provides most overstayers with exception of the visa waiver program visitors with more due process protection than illegal border crosses. So you see with the illegal border crosses, they can just ship them out and send them on their way and deport them, hence force with no kind of repercussions. But with the overstayers, they have to go through a process, a legal process, um, and that includes the right to an immigration court hearing. And that's what, I mean, we have that here as well, which a lot of them, they try to get away with by putting them in detention and not allowing them access to um, anyone who can help them get a court hearing. Most of the times they don't have the money anyway, but that's not the point. They should be given the opportunity. But, you know, and they've got a certain amount to do it and then they ship them off. So, what's this saying now? Yeah, so those people like the border crosses, uh, they can be subjected to expedited removal, which includes detention and no right to a hearing in most cases. As a condition of entering without a visa, um, visa waiver program visitors are required to sign a form that waives their right to an immigration hearing. So even if you've got, even if you came in on a visa waiver program and you overstay, you're going to end up, they're going to ask you to sign something. So you're going to end up just like the illegal border crosses, you're not going to have a right to a hearing. So if you've overstayed, don't think you can, you know, plea your case. You're not going to be allowed to. Deportation, that's it. Um, they reckon a high risk of detention and swift deportation could serve as a deterrent to overstaying in some situations. Um, yeah, I mean, people now on this, um, I'm on that that visa program at the moment because they haven't stopped it for the UK but I would have to get an e-verify which is um, one of those what do they call it again um, I'm, well it's an electronic transfer that you have to sign and before I can go to um, America I thought I wrote it down but I didn't and I can't remember it my brain is going out the window after a hard day's work but yeah, I hope you found that useful. So basically what I'm trying to say is, yeah, we hear it going around all of the Jamaicans in, in, in America, thousands of them have overstayed 10,000. It sounds like a lot, but when you compare it to 33,000 and goodness knows and 26,000 here, there and everywhere, it's, mar it's not marginal, but it's not 
it's not bad and it's not good. Good thing is, is that, you know, you need to really check yourself because like um, people say, it has a bad impact on other people who want to follow after you. Because what will happen when they start restricting and limiting people from Jamaica, no one will be able to go to Jamaica. No, no one will be able to go to America from all these countries who've overstayed. And yeah, well, I think they're heading that way anyway, whether they overstayed or not. They just don't want immigrants in their country. We don't want immigrants. That's what it boils down to. Bye-bye.